I want us to kind of delve into, uh, first of all, your new initiative, your new albums. The new albums? You well, have two. Two new albums um, of the recent, within the last um, 30 days. One is called the Instafame album, mm -hmm. and the other one is called Pop Culture. And those albums were uh, basically structured to introduce me to the world because these are the first two albums that I'm shooting music videos, production, right. doing marketing, advertising, promotion, and branding, and interviews as we're doing now, and podcasts to introduce people to um, my style of rap, my style of music, and my uh, preferred sound. And so it's interesting because you said your first two this time. Explain what do you mean by that? So you have multiple albums, obviously, in, in your past. Right. I have about 35 albums, but these are the first two of the 35 so far that I'm doing a hello, my name is to the world. So this is um, the first time that people would take notice, not because of this being, quote unquote, my best, but it's the first of current pop culture relevancy. All right, I wanna kind of get into your history a little bit, if that's sure. okay. Yes. Um, so in order for us to understand what your relevancy is, yes. uh, let me know a little bit about your history. You started with rap how? All right, I started in 84. Uh, my uh, uncle um, and I lived on the same block um, when I came back from living in Texas, when I came back from I guess high school slash college in 1984, and he introduced me to uh, Leland Robinson, which is uh, Sugar, Sugar Hill, Hill Records, Records. Um, and his mother at the time, uh, Sylvia Robinson, and the family Joey Robinson, etc. Um, gave me an uh, opportunity to have a group deal with a group that I had at mm -hmm. the point. Um, and uh, the deal didn't go through. Eventually I wound up going solo. But from that, I had my first experience of understanding what an actual contract would you know, be if I got into the music industry as, an, as a solo artist. Took that type of uh, understanding and then went to uh, Tommy Boy Records and got uh, another deal. Later, found myself in the recording studio at Chung King Studio and met Russell Simmons, and Russell was working with the Beastie Boys, LL Cool J, Run DMC, etc. And I pursued my music career and eventually got to release my first album or recorded my first album in 85 and 86, and it came out in 87. So tell me also, because I remember that you had mentioned that you uh, also were working with Houdini. So you were also a, a dancer. I was a dancer correct? for Houdini. Um, there was a tour called the Raising Hell Tour. Okay. That featured Run DMC, um, LL Cool J, the Beastie Boys, um, Public Enemy. And mm -hmm. that tour uh, took me as a dancer for Houdini, myself and another guy named Cliff Love okay. around the world. London, Japan, you know, all over. And then later we added another dancer named Stretch um, into the picture. And when Stretch came into the picture, I kind of faded more out of wanting to dance to stick with pursuing my um, album, um, I guess, focus. And that's when I started to record my album a little bit tighter in 86 and released it in 87, which is called the Lance Romance Stop and Listen album. Okay. So, um, in terms of that, what was the segue afterwards? I mean, what happened after this experience with Houdini, 86? 86. Moving forward, I mean, what was the, the situation? Well, then I, um, I would dance for Houdini, but prior to dancing with Houdini, I was doing a background um, vocals on the very first solo Bobby Brown album, which is called Bobby Brown, King of Stage. Uh, myself, um, Mixmaster Ice, Dr. Ice, a few of us, Smooth B from Nice and Smooth, um, worked with Bobby Brown and put some things together on his first album, King of Stage. This is before the Don't Be Crew, My Prerogative album. Okay. So this is the 80, 86, 87 album. You know, uh, so from Houdini and Bobby Brown and Smooth B and Greg Nice and, you know, early on learning from, you know, multiple people from that 80s hip hop era, I decided that this is this was gonna be my life, but I also wanted to make sure that I owned my own music 
owned my own publishing and owned my own name because I seen things happening you know early on that I understood that uh, if you could come into the game and understand business then you have more of a long jeopardy if you can you know parlay it into more of a business than just the art form so business wise you've been parlaying yes if you want to explain more about this parlaying in terms of I know that you have this ice skating endeavor which is also a completely different venue that no one's been doing ever right in the rap realm yes tell me about this so I was able to maintain staying in the music industry consistently because I made sure that I got into the music publishing side mm -hmm. so um, I released my stop and listen in 86 87 and then I made an album that I didn't release actually until this year um, the end of last year called what? 1988 hip-hop okay and then I released another album called Born to Entertain in 1990. That was on the that was on the McCola record label. Mm -hmm. And then in '91, I released Fortune and Fame, which is um, on the Ichiban label out of Atlanta okay. during my Bobby Brown production time. '93, I signed to EMI Music Publishing, which is a publishing company that Pharrell was also signed to, Timberland, Missy, um, Rodney Jerkins, Jermaine Dupri, Dallas Austin, a lot of great writers. And um, fast forward, 2012, Sony purchased EMI. That let me um, understand that I was still not relevant because I made hits, but relevant because they didn't let me go out of my agreement, which means that they had looked oh, at me okay. as some sure. something of value because they let you know 300 or so people go, mm -hmm. and they kept me, and I had nothing on the charts. It kind of gave me a little bit of motivation during that time I was already starting my network fashion mm -hmm. news network FNN but as an artist I didn't plan on coming an artist becoming an artist again until 2000 the end of 2014 what do you reckon that uh, was the main motivator in you uh, coming into terms of you wanting to pursue music again at like a later age yeah because now it's I mean at 2014 I went back in the studio and made actually like four salsa albums but then I realized I needed something, then a, a bigger platform um, than uh, that. And it was um, something that happened um, that made me realize that, you know what? I have one shot of fulfilling what I've always wanted to fulfill. Sure. And I needed that. So um, in 2005, mm -hmm. going into 2007, I... Uh, served 24 months in the feds and when I came out I had uh, probation okay what happened in 2014 um, I got detained in Portland Oregon um, by uh, um, an officer that just was just happy to be an officer by me having a loud vocal moment with my girlfriend and wound up giving him my ID because I was okay and said hey I violated probation and I already completed probation but they said I didn't sign out wow. the reason that I'm getting into this portion of the conversation is because at that moment when I had to go back in front of the judge who who you know eventually told me that it was just a stupid thing that I shouldn't even be here um, and I had, had the process of going from Portland to New York I had served enough time time served you know in that process sure. but um, when I had to physically go to the halfway house, <laughs> which was part of my whole quote unquote like 30 day situation, I realized that I still wanted to be an artist and I had something to talk about. And so that's December of 2014. Okay. So from 2015 to now, I released like 20 Lance Romance albums. Was this whilst you being in no I was not I was never really in I was incarcerated for the moment of just until I had to see the judge but it let me realize while I was in halfway house when I was understanding that the industry has shifted to the internet very dominantly right and people had a shot to do what they want without waiting on the big labels to state what they can do <laughs> How do you feel all of these like 
albums that come out um, that you repeatedly uh, have per month, essentially, you, you come out with all of these different songs, these different albums. How do you get the uh, creativity, essentially, that fuels that inspiration? Right. I think I, I was inspired because I've never got to really, you know, produce or write for many years of what I wanted to say as an artist, even though I wrote and produced a lot of things for other artists and other people. But I think that it was important for me to finally do what I wanted to do without having anybody to, to tell me that I couldn't release it. So mm. the beauty of having iTunes, CD Baby, Spotify, um, Amazon was like, great. I can record it. I can pay for it. You know, I can get it mastered, shoot my own cover, shoot a video, upload it, no one's permission, and basically be on the market overnight. And it wasn't about having hits it was about releasing what i wanted to release because i knew the word catalog from being with emi and sony that it doesn't matter if you had a hit but what did matter is you owned your own material and one day they will be hits and you'll get to use it on something and you have been using it and you've been able to like utilize essentially your name um i want to kind of dial back to the skating on ice i want to dial back to fnn yes. can you please talk on both of those points right so Fast forward till today, um, I made a Christmas album, technically December of, of last year, 2018. Right. Um, started recording it like during. And, and the incentive was? The incentive was I actually came to this recording studio. One, um, the reason that I suggested we do this uh, podcast here is I came to this recording studio around you know early October, right before Halloween or late October. and wanted to make um, dance music <laughs> and wound up making a house record that was really cool and then Rich the engineer suggested that I should listen to a Christmas um, album that had a house feel and from that point on I decided you know what I've always wanted to do a Christmas album sure. but how do I just start writing it it happened we had some magic here it happened and we got Christmas on ice and then I understood that Mariah Carey had one of the most successful Christmas albums ever, but she was already famous, but there were no consistent um, artists that had platforms after they made the album. Mm -hmm. Boys the Men, Brian McKnight, you know, other artists and legends. There were not any way for them to consistently promote. So I knew that in this new world, you had to do something that's relevant to pop culture and make people go, oh, right? right. Therefore, I decided to take this to Bryant Park and see if we can do a show. Um, Bryant Park came back with prices that were extremely high. And I said, you know what? I need a venue. I need a um, residency. Right. And that residency wound up being Chelsea Piers. And they wound up um, accepting me after I, they saw me training with one of their, you know, trainers, um, skating coaches. And um, her name was Stephanie. And she took me under her wing and said you're going to learn how and I wanted to I don't say I wanted to quit well I, I guess there were multiple times that I didn't feel like this was going to work out okay. but she told me just you know stick with it and I said you know what I do want to do things that other people um, can't do and won't do because they don't have the work ethic so that was my drive the work ethic to learn how to ice skate <laughs> at 52. It's definitely not something that you hear very often or ever. Um, right. Do you feel like this is something that adds, like, to not your moniker, but adds to your appeal is the fact that you kind of go above and beyond other rappers in the game because you're so passionate for what you do? Yeah, I think the internet allowed me to realize that there were still um, people that didn't care if you were old school or new school, just as long as you were relevant, yeah. right? Because your lifestyle became your brand. And I think by me ice skating and now doing hockey, it becomes who you are. And if you're doing it, you can't fake it because you have to do it in order to achieve the reality of being in it. Tell and me about your schedule. I don't mean to cut you off yeah. with that. Tell me, what, what is your like ice skating schedule? I mean, my, what, my schedule is at um, this point, this point um, until recently, it was yoga in the morning. Right. So if it's not yoga, it's workout. Um, if it's not a full workout, it is at least a cardio workout, at least, you know, six miles. And then it's um, skating. And then after skating, um, it would be the recording studio. Um, from this point on, I would have dance in between once all the albums are completed. Mm -hmm. It would be yoga, skating, 
dance rehearsal once the albums are done I don't have to keep recording right but I think I will continue to always record but the dance rehearsals would be in between but I just think that um, if I can't be as I don't want to use the word relevant if I can't be in the moment of the mm -hmm. traditional format of what is considered traditional in today's radio world I could I could always feel that I'm relevant based on my work ethic. Sure. Right. And I think th at the end of the day, you are what you put into your, your work because then you understand your value. Absolutely. And I understood my value was stay who you are, work hard, and eventually your time will come um, if you don't have to, you know, bend or conform to what the world considers the sound of music that I'm not really feeling, not saying I'm hating, but I'm not going to do what I don't feel, but I'm blessed to be able to do and afford um, what I believe is the right style for my upbringing mm -hmm. and my, my era that I miss, which is um, the hip hop sound, R&B with hip hop, um, classic house, and um, real soulful relevant um, instrumentation sure so um, I'm blessed that I'm be I'm able to do it and release music every month without anyone telling me what they like or what they don't like and on top of that you have uh, FNN right Are so we, can we kind of delve into that yes yeah, so so FNN was created so that I can have a platform to put my music on. Let's explain on. what FNN is to people that don't know that. Right, FNN is a 24 hour, seven day a week fashion channel on the direction of a CNN or an ESPN where it would be all day, every day mm -hmm. structure of news related to the fashion industry mm -hmm. on a consistent basis of taking print that you would see in a magazine and bringing it to life on the screen in your how home right and then you can later see it on your mobile device or any other digital device but it's a television network not a um, YouTube channel or sure. another digital platform it is a TV TV what spurred uh, this idea well because I knew at the end of the day coming from publishing that you would make more money with your music on movies and content and commercials. Mm -hmm. So I knew the numbers. I knew that um, you had 576 commercials a day. Mm -hmm. If I own the network, I can put my music on 576 commercials a day. Right. Right. Just knowing that. Forget the content. Right. That I said I know those numbers. So even I, I'm going to take it to the lowest, lowest, lowest. Let's say I only was going to make a dollar. Mm-hmm. On 576 commercials that's still five hundred and seventy six dollars a day right right and in sure. today's world if I can make five hundred and seventy six dollars a day I'm doing pretty good yeah right absolutely and then I can turn that dollar into five then turn that dollar into ten sure. twenty and then a hundred and then a thousand then I'm doing better than average by doing what I wanted to do so the network was because I knew I had to figure out how to get my own music on commercials and content without other people telling me it wasn't good enough okay. or they didn't like it. If I own my network, I control the music on what I would like to see or hear. Kind of sounds like you're like ramping up. Things are accelerating. Okay. So what are the next steps? I mean, what do you have going for you in terms of you've had pop culture, you have InstaFame out. And now we are in the process of recording New World. New World. Which would be another seven track album which will be, debut um, next Friday. Okay. Right? It will come out before April 15th. Fantastic. And then I have another one called Yoga Inspiration. Okay. Which would happen, which are more ballads, which would happen by the end of the month. And with those albums and music videos attached between the Christmas album and these four so you have Christmas on Ice then Insta Fame, Pop Culture, New World mm -hmm. and Yoga Inspiration. Fantastic. Those five total 50 songs with 50 songs and 50 videos I am now introduced to the world. <laughs> So 
so basically, do you think that your big segue will also uh, be the fact that you you are introducing all of these multiple records, these albums that are being released? Yeah, I think the industry um, eventually what 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 I believe is going to happen. It's like you can't deny the amount of work anyone does, mm -hmm. but then you can't deny the amount of quality of work someone really does. So if anyone didn't know me from the past or FNN, it's gonna be hard to say, I don't like none of those 50 songs. Right. Impossible that you, I couldn't make 50, I could make 50 songs, you don't like one. Sure. Sorry, so in my mind, I believe anyone that has the time to go through it, they'll find something they like. And if I had one person that liked one song in this new era of music, without me making what the new era of music sounds like, right. then I feel like I won, right? Sure. That I made something I wanted and one person liked it and another person liked it. And they might not like, per se, me, but they might like the sound. Sure. They might like my video. They might like my swag. That might like be like, damn, that, that, that guy still got it. Right. Or I'm not really feeling him doesn't matter at the end of the day they'll realize you can't control him he's doing what he's wanting to do yeah right yeah absolutely. And, and i think that would be more of a respect level um in terms of closing i would like to know um there's so many people out there in the world uh that have these I ideas abilities uh song level wise rap level wise what do you think distinguishes you from other people and what do you think that your albums have to offer to like a newer generation the millennials the you know the younger generations right i, I don't what think do it's you recognize in yourself sorry no, right. continue i don't think it's the what i believe it's what i'm doing i think it's the no of being real in your lifestyle mm -hmm. i think today if you're not making a sound that people are wanting um, without naming artists, I think what people will get out of me is that he's creating music he wants, but he figured out how to put it on TV, make money from it, regardless of a DJ liking it or radio place, you know, a placement, sure. which takes the control out of a lot of people. I'm taking power away from people, right? To say, you can't control me, right? right? I made a TV network and my music's on my TV network. Oh, and I'm making a lot of money right. without you, and I don't care what you rate me, what you give me. I figured out how to make money without a rating, right? right? My own royalty system. Put it out, get a check, right? Yeah. So for other artists, I just think, find your lane, figure out what you can do. I created a lane. Yeah. Granted, it's a huge lane, but I found what works for me, and then I went and found a platform, which is a skating rink, where I could do multiple shows and call it my venue, my um, residency, to do performances and sell tickets. My Christmas on Ice shows are coming up soon and I'll be able to sell multiple tickets to see a rapper on ice. But you already know if I'm from an era of performance, I'm gonna have a hot show on ice. Right. It's gonna be dancers and it's gonna be music. There's gonna be, it's gonna be legit. You know, legit people haven't seen sure. real performance in a long time. It's also but a throwback to the hip hop. Because throwback to hip hop. I'm sticking with um, um, baseball hats, hoodies, sneakers and glasses, always matching, never repeating any outfit. Sure. But that's what I chose to do to be relevant to pop culture. So what I'm giving the relevancy in pop culture, it was either conform to their sound or stay true to who I am, but keep it fresh enough to where they think I'm relevant by looking on my gram, Brilliant. right? Yeah. And FNN will hopefully introduce the world to multiple designers and fashion people the world didn't get to see, mm -hmm. and hopefully they would like to hear my music and other music that we're putting out, starting with Comcast this summer and then DirecTV in the fall. But right now, we're putting all the content together to release it as one package and I'm hoping that everyone, you know, can digest 50 songs from Lance Romance and at least the network as a platform to express fashion. And what do you, you know? expect your final, like, hello world, you're coming out, right? And you're, you're reintroducing yourself. What do you want to say to people? What is your message? Um, my message to people is one, I'm really into gun control. 
in the issue through my music. Okay. So um, I think it's important to remember not getting into the very political direction, but we still need to bring the awareness of, you know, hoping hoping to change the, these um, unorthodox gun control laws that people are, you know, taking time to get to. And, you know, I don't want to see any more violence or kids getting killed or other people getting killed with, you know, assault rifles. And that's a whole different direction. So my word is I have a song called No More, which pertains to no more bullets, no more guns. But I just want people to understand that I'm, I'm focused on not trying to change the world, but bring a message of truth through the music that I'm doing, but also letting people know um, you don't have to conform if you believe in your own skills and your talent. Fantastic. But I'm very humbled and blessed to still be doing this, especially ice skating and rapping, turning 53 in July. I love it. I think, I mean, I'm all out of, the qu out of questions. Do you feel like you have anything else that you'd like to discuss? I, I just feel that, you know, um, we live in a very um, unique world without the world, res without people showing respect. So the podcast and you interviewing me um, is a way for me to, you know, state how I feel or what I'm doing, not worrying about who's respecting this, but at least we're getting it out. And sure. then eventually, um, like anything else, we'll earn the respect um, to sure. um, our audience or those that would follow, you know, yourself, you know, Melody or Lance Romance. Right. But at um, the end of the day, I just pray that there are many people that can, you know, understand that their own value is their self-worth that's worth something. But you have to dig deep and believe in it. Mm -hmm. And there is no age to the game. Um, I guess the one thing that you said, what can I state, is I'm 53 and I'm making rap records like I'm 23. That's and, fantastic. And I'm skating on ice like I'm 17, right? So sure. there is no age to the concept of you're old or you're young. Is what do you feel? What fuels you? What fuels you, feel, fuels you, but what can actually motivate you to want to do more and want more out of life? And that's, you know, um, one of those Oprah direction conversations <laughs> sure. you know what is your motivation mm -hmm. in life um and i was coming back from florida uh listening to a podcast which was um gwyneth paltrow and in interviewing oprah okay on the goop podcast mm -hmm. and i realized wow that's that's very appealing that um even if you were not um a fan of podcast at that moment, the conversations are very intellectual and intelligent enough to hear the diversity in sure. both women, but also projecting um, conversations that could fit uh, many demographics, many race, creed, religions, you know, Absolutely. colors and different boundaries. So I'm happy about our first podcast here at the uh, studios in New York City in Manhattan. Absolutely. I feel like this bridges um, a lot of global gaps. Yes. You're, you know, I mean, podcasts kind of, they bring and bridge everything together in terms of things that you want to represent and things that people can connect with you about. Right. Um, it's more personal, and I really respect you having this podcast with me and, and our first one of many, I hope. Yeah, well, this is the first of many podcasts, which we would focus on the behind the scenes of the business side of music and entertainment. Absolutely. And it is important for artists to understand outside of their music to partner with brands and find branding deals, endorsement deals mm -hmm. that could relate to their platform or their artist image. Um, I'm speaking tomorrow with the um, owners of the brand that you see me wearing now, um, which is Top Gun, which is basically a flight um, brand based on the aviation of, you know, flying. And so Top Gun jacket and hoodies and dope. glasses yeah. and hats um, <laughs> with matching Nikes. It's just, that's who I am. So it, it was a, an, an organic fit. And that's what I always think that artists should do is stay organic i didn't go left field they didn't go right for me it just felt natural and mm -hmm. i like top gun and their quality and i stayed with the lane that people could see me 
and every day they can see me in the studio, in the video, on the streets, and it's still me. So, so keep just, it real. Just keep it real. Find a brand that works for you or create something that basically makes you feel comfortable as you're entertaining on your platforms or your career. So you're appealing to everyone on different levels. I, I'm, I'm, I'm appealing to those that are appealed to the look and the swag I that dig it. Lance Romance has. I dig it. Lance Romance, I dig it. <laughs>